Hello, students. We know that when concrete is transported from the mixing plant to the construction site over a long distance, concrete is prone to segregation, stratification, and setting. Additionally, high rise concrete requires concrete with high fluidity for pumping. How can we maintain the workability of concrete during long distance transportation or ensure that highly fluid concrete can be easily pumped without clogging? This requires the addition of admixtures in concrete. Today, let's learn about concrete admixtures together. What are concrete admixtures? It refers to substances added during the concrete mixing process to improve its performance. Except under special circumstances, the dosage generally does not exceed 5% of the cement content. Concrete admixtures are characterized by a variety of types, small dosages, significant effects on concrete performance, and have the characteristics of low investment, rapid effectiveness, and significant technical and economic benefits. With the continuous advancement of science and technology, admixtures have been increasingly applied and have become the fifth important component of concrete, in addition to the four basic components. There are many types of concrete admixtures, which can be classified into four main categories based on their primary functions. The first category is admixtures that improve concrete rheological properties, including various water reducers, air and training agents, and pumping agents. The second category is admixtures that regulate the setting time of concrete, including retarders, early strength agents, and quick setting agents. The third category is admixtures that improve the durability of concrete, including air and training agents, water proofing agents, rust inhibitors, and shrinkage reducers. The fourth category is admixtures that improve other properties of concrete, including air and training agents, expanding agents, and antifreeze agents, etc. Now, let's take a look at commonly used admixtures. Water reducers. Just as the name implies, are admixtures that can reduce water content. Under what circumstances can water be reduced? It means that under the condition of constant workability and cement content of concrete, water consumption can be reduced and the strength of concrete can be increased. If workability and strength remain unchanged, cement consumption can also be saved. Air and training agents. Admixtures that introduce a large number of uniformly distributed, closed, and stable microbubbles into the mixing process of concrete. Air and training agents generally improve the durability of concrete, such as frost resistance and impermeability. Early strength agents. Admixtures that can improve the early strength of concrete without significantly affecting the later strength. Retarders, admixtures that reduce the hydration rate and hydration heat of cement or gypsum, extending the setting time. Concrete generally requires the addition of retarders for long-distance transportation. Waterproofing agents, just as the name implies, are admixtures that serve as waterproofing agents. How do they waterproof? Generally. Concrete hardening is accompanied by volume shrinkage, which is prone to cracking. However, adding waterproofing agents during concrete mixing can allow the cement to expand uniformly during setting and hardening, compensating for shrinkage and filling the voids between cement particles. This reduces cracks and provides waterproofing. 
In modern concrete technology, water reducers are currently the most widely used. According to the effectiveness and functions of water reducers, they can be classified into ordinary, high efficiency, and high performance water reducers. Where high efficiency water reducers refer to those with a reduction rate of over 20%. High performance water reducers refer to those with a higher reduction rate compared to high efficiency water reducers, better slump retention performance, less drying shrinkage, and certain air and training properties. Resulting in more significant technical and economic effects. Of course, they are also relatively expensive. So, why can water reducers reduce the unit water content of concrete? Let's start by understanding the principle of water reducers through an experiment. In two 100 mm graduated cylinders, add 10 grams of cement and 80 milliliters of water each. One cylinder does not add a water reducer, while the other cylinder adds a drop of water reducer. After sealing the cylinders with stoppers, shake them vigorously several times to ensure thorough mixing of the materials. Then, observe them simultaneously on the table. Initially, the cement particles in both cylinders are uniformly dispersed in the water, appearing turbid, with no significant difference between the two. After one minute, observe that the cylinder without the water reducer starts to stratify, and the settling speed increases. By five minutes, sedimentation is complete. In contrast, the cylinder with the water reducer remains undisturbed after 10 minutes, with cement particles still uniformly dispersed in the water without signs of stratification. This demonstrates the dispersing effect of water reducers. So, why can water reducers produce this dispersing effect? To answer this question, Let's start with cement production. As we learned about cement earlier, we know that cement is produced by burning cement clinker at 1450 degrees Celsius and then grinding it. Therefore, cement mineral particles carry static electricity with different charges between them. When cement is mixed with water, the molecular cohesive force between cement particles causes the formation of a flocculated structure where a certain amount of mixing water, or free water, is encapsulated. This reduces the workability of the concrete mixture. Therefore, we observe that the first cylinder starts to stratify quickly after one minute. If an appropriate amount of water reducer is added to cement, the surface activity of the water reducer causes hydrophobic groups to orientally adsorb on the surface of cement particles with hydrophilic groups pointing towards the aqueous solution. This results in cement particles with the same charge on their surfaces, causing them to repel each other under the influence of electric repulsion. The flocculated structure disintegrates, releasing the encapsulated free water, thereby effectively increasing the fluidity of the concrete mixture. This is why water reducers can improve the fluidity of concrete. After sufficient water reducer is adsorbed on the surface of cement particles, a stable, solvated water film layer forms on the surface of cement particles, preventing direct contact between cement particles and lubricating the interface between particles, thus improving the workability of the concrete mixture. In addition, since cement particles are effectively dispersed and the particle surfaces are sufficiently wetted by water, the hydration area of cement particles is increased, 
ensuring more complete hydration and thus improving the strength of concrete. The principle of water reducer is as follows. Animated demonstration. As mentioned earlier, the principle of water reducers consists of three parts, adsorption dispersion, adsorption dispersion effect, lubrication effect, and wetting effect. As long as a small amount of water reducer is added, the workability of hardened concrete can be improved, and the performance of hardened concrete, such as strength, can be enhanced. Water reducers have become an indispensable component of high-performance concrete. Based on water reducers, various performance admixtures can be compounded. For example, water reducers added with retarders can be formulated into retarding water reducers, suitable for summer construction and long-distance transportation of concrete. Water reducers added with early strength agents can be formulated into early strength water reducers, suitable for winter concrete. And water reducers added with retarders, slump retainers, air and training agents, etc., can be formulated into pumping agents, suitable for pumping concrete. Depending on the purpose, the addition of water reducers in concrete generally achieves the following effects. 1. Under constant water and cement content, adding water reducers can release the water trapped in the flocculated structure, thus increasing the flowability. As shown in the figure, the slump increased from 50 mm to 220 mm after adding water reducers, as shown in the diagram. 2. Under constant flowability and cement content, reducing water usage and water binder ratio while ensuring thorough wetting and hydration of cement particles can enhance the strength of concrete. As shown in the graph, the addition of water reducer increased the strength of concrete by 10 MPa. 3. Adding water reducer can increase strength, allowing for a reduction in cement usage by 10% to 15% while maintaining the same concrete strength. 4. Improve the durability of concrete. Well, students, through the learning, do you understand the classifications and the technical and economic effects of admixtures? Do you know how many parts the principle of water reducers consists of? That's all for this lesson. Thank you, everyone.